Are you visiting Rome for the first time and don't know where to begin planning your trip? I just came back from my first trip to Rome and I can tell you the city is not just a living museum in itself. This building alone is as old as America is. That is Rome. It is a testament to what humankind was capable of building and creating. After 2,000 years after it was built, it's still the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. From ancient engineering all the way to Renaissance art, Rome is an inspiration and a must-travel destination for everyone. In this video, I'll share the best things to do, where to stay, and how to enjoy your first time in Rome in three days. Day 1. Let's just start the journey from the airport. You're probably feeling tired and jet-lagged. The best and hassle-free way to get to your hotel is getting a taxi from the airport. Don't even bother with your app. The official taxi you get in the airport is regulated and it costs a flat 50 euros to get anywhere in the city center. For about a 40-minute ride, that's reasonable. Our first cab is Fiat, yes! We are in Italy! Now that we are in Italy, let's talk about where you should stay for the first time real quick. For less than 3-day itinerary, you should stay in a central area that is around here. If you plan to explore Rome mostly on foot, your best neighborhoods are near the Trevi Fountain, Pantheon, and the Spanish Steps. You can also stay near the Colosseum or in Monte or the Vatican City or in Prati. Both neighborhoods offer good access to the major attractions, yet are less busy. And if you plan to spend more than five days in Rome, you should consider staying in Trastevere. It is much more local and laid back and not too far from the major attractions. We chose to stay near the Trevi Fountain, and I'll show the pros and cons of staying in that area shortly. For now, let's go see the Trevi Fountain. The street is quite empty. We're gonna just explore and hang out and... Oh my god! <laughs> wow! That greeting was uncalled for, but soon I figured why some locals were mean to the visitors. As the day began, Rome was getting filled with more and more visitors, to a degree that walking along the streets was difficult. It is packed with people. I would be annoyed too if I were local. Being in the streets of New York, being incredibly angry at all the tourists, I would say, move, pretend it's a city. Though I don't make fun of people, I share travel tips. 11 p.m., finally, there is much less people at the Trevi Fountain. If you really want to beat the crowd, I think you have to be here like at 6 a.m. You heard me right. Plan to visit the Trevi Fountain as the last thing at night or the first thing in the morning. I'm mainly impressed how this is so well maintained. It's like an outdoor fountain built in 1762. It looks pretty modern. I mean, to be honest, it kind of looks like Vegas. I'm not in charge of other people's reactions. Oh my god. <laughs> Before the jet lag really hits, let's check out one more place. It's just a 10 minute walk from here of forbidden excitement she's always longed for. But don't you have to work? I'm not sure if it's Audrey Hepburn or Instagram, but the Spanish steps has been drawing a huge crowd. The real story behind these stairs is that they are a literal and metaphorical bridge between the sacred and the eternal city. It's kind of like the um, yeah. Montmartre. This place reminded me of the steps at the Basilica in Montmartre in Paris. And it turns out... So this church actually was not for Spanish royals, it's for French royals. Contrary to the name, the Spanish steps were built by the French, for the French church atop. So why it's called Spanish Steps? And if you know the answer, let me know in the comment. I will select some answers and send out gifts. Personally, I enjoyed roaming around the top of the hill and stopping by this observation deck. If I had more time in Rome, I would definitely check out the Villa Medici as well. 
After a nice walk around the top of the hill, I was just so ready to check into a hotel and crash. Wow. This elevator is not just small, but like really old style. Yeah. <laughs> With that said, here's what to do in Rome number five. Try a boutique hotel as opposed to a big franchise. You might end up staying in the home of a family for five generations. Ooh, there's a bottle of wine. I don't know if it's for us to enjoy. Most of the furniture and decorations were from the older generations, and I liked how they kept things original and authentic. The bathroom was modern, except the flushing system was a bit unusual. It seems to me Rome has some unusual water infrastructure. To learn more, watch the water faucet clip in this video. After catching up from the jet lag, we hit the road again. I mean, shuffle along the street again. For our much anticipated Pantheon tour. Now, if you're thinking my music is a little bit over the top, wait until I share some more fascinating facts about this place. This is not only the oldest temple and a building in the whole world that is still in use today, but also it is the largest unsupported concrete dome the world has ever built. And of course, I've learned all of that from audio tour. I highly recommend this. The most surprising thing I learned today is that the painter Raphael is buried here. Another surprising discovery was that the tip of the dome is completely open. I can see the sky clearly. And what happens if it rains or snows? Well, I didn't have to guess much longer. Out of nowhere, it started to rain and the rain came right through the open dome. Soon, we were looking at quite a bizarre scenery of heavy hail hitting the floor of the Pantheon. And it was the middle of April. Moral of the story is... Big ladies and big poncho, baby umbrella. And don't anger the gods. <laughs> Do not anger the gods by asking questions like, what happens if it rains or snows? The first day is over, also it's time for another tip. Unless it's necessary, avoid going to these restaurants right outside the Pantheon. As you can imagine, these are more or less tourist traps. The food was mediocre at best, the service was quite pushy, and the bill is pricier than other areas for the food and the service provided. Instead, go to these small alleys around the corner you'll find more authentic and local restaurants offering better service and food for less euros. Day 2. Let's say you have just one day to explore Rome. What should you do? Easy. Roman Forum and Colosseum. So standing up here, you can truly imagine what it was like living in ancient Rome. Inarguably, Ancient Rome was the most powerful and influential empire, and the Roman Forum had been the center of it all. This wasn't just a polished royal palace. This was a plaza where ordinary Romans gathered around to hear public speech and criminal trials and so on. It's quite surreal if you think about it. So what we miss is a lot, huh? It's this, you see, that's what it this was here. These ruins we get to see today were excavated and restored throughout centuries. There is so much to learn about this place. And without the tour, I would felt lost and missed out for sure. Once you're done exploring the Roman Forum, it's showtime. We're heading to the Colosseum with enthusiasm like an ancient Roman who was excited to see brutal fights. It shows up there, let's go. Let's go. As the world's largest ancient 
amphitheater ever built. The Colosseum is a symbol of the power and influence of the Roman Empire. It's hard to relate to the level of violence and brutality of that time. Nonetheless, it is truly awe-inspiring to witness its sheer ingenuity and incredible engineering skills of Romans. The Colosseum tour can take about a half day and it can be quite intense. I was here. So I suggest having a mellow and spontaneous evening for a change. Like strolling around the cobblestone streets of Rome at night. I like that. And why I trust. <laughs> so coming here at night feels also different. It's quieter, you know, you see the dark sky. I really loved strolling around the streets of Rome at night. As it got darker, Rome exuded its true character and beauty. A night walk in Rome is a must. I highly encourage you to get lost in the city, but here are some landmarks that you might want to make a note of. Day 3. A trip to Rome isn't complete without paying a visit to the one and only Vatican City. Though technically it's not wrong. Just because we're not in Vatican anymore? <laughs> That's Vatican. Yeah. Behind the wall is Vatican. Here, not Vatican. As the world's smallest sovereign state, Vatican City consists of a walled enclave within the city of Rome. And yes, it's a home to the Pope and the seat of the Roman Catholic Church. Just standing in the St. Peter's Square put me in awe. The fountain, so beautiful. The water is like dancing. We won't be able to go into the basilica because um, the line is just like, I don't see the end of the line. The line was formed all around the square and it looked infinite. So get your tickets in advance if you're planning to visit the basilica. And now, if you're wondering how on earth I didn't book a ticket in advance because I'm all about planning, well, I had an even longer line to skip and that is the line to the Vatican Museum. Well, so we just did like, this is a security line. Since we already have a ticket, we just, uh, they scanned the ticket uh, and we're going through the security now. That's amazing. There. I thought we have to be in line for hours and hours. Yeah. So like we got here like early, but like totally. I, I hide. How much is the skin? Do you have the big skin? Can you show us? I highly recommend to get this ticket. Okay. So it was about thirty-five euros per each. Thirty-five per person yeah. all in. So up. I think we kind of basically paid like eleven fifty. Yeah, more. Uh, for like just to skip the line, kind yeah, of. Yeah, and get your phones. Get your phones, yeah. After skipping the line, I really wanted to take my time to explore the Vatican City without rushing. Okay, I've been to some of the world-class art museums, but the sheer volume of art and artifacts that the Vatican Museum has is just another level. You will be surrounded by masterful paintings, murals, and sculptures every step you take and these are spanning over two centuries. Oh, there's no way to enjoy the details of anything. Yeah. You see the boom, 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 yeah. Absolutely overwhelmed, yeah. And there's just like <laughs> endless amount of artwork. It's gonna take a couple of years to see all the artwork here and read the story behind it and truly understand everything. But for the highlights of them all, I paid full attention. And they are Raphael's room where you can see the whimsical portrait of the painter himself in the painting. And of course, the one and only Sistine Chapel ceiling, painted by Michelangelo. 
So the tour is over officially and we are going to wait for our turn to go into the Sistine Chapel on our own. And videos, photos are not allowed, so I'll see you guys outside. Okay, we're still not near the Sistine Chapel yet. I've been seeing this sign uh, with the arrow, Sistine Chapel right here, for like for the last 30 minutes. Where is Sistine Chapel? It definitely dragged on a bit. Finally, we made it. And it was worth the drag. The Vatican Museum was unlike anything I've been to. So you should pay a visit and to learn more about the logistics of visiting, check out my before you go video linked right here. For our last evening in Rome, we decided to roam around, pun intended, from the Vatican to Trastevere. We saw cute cafes, shops, and restaurants where we would have hung out if we had more time in Rome. For our last meal, we went to this very local restaurant in Trastevere. Three days in Rome was definitely a good amount of time to explore the historic side of Rome. And I can easily see myself staying in Rome for five days or even a week exploring the food and culture and more hidden ruins. My trip to Italy wasn't done yet. Next up is Florence. So click that subscribe button now. And if you found any value in this video, please give it a like and let me know in the comments. It really helps this channel and our travel community grow. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.